love Dublin. I love Guinness, and I will be drinking a pint of Guinness uh, <laughs> uh, here later. But I want to make um, a confession to everybody. Uh, and the confession is that some men play golf, other men have model railways, and my hobby is annoying the Church of Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> And the reason I do so, because it says that it's a religion, and for those people who criticise it, it says you shut up. And this I cannot abide. What kind of religion is it that builds an enormous cathedral upside down, underground? Yeah. So I set out to go to this cathedral and see what happens. And we're going to show a little film, I hope. And maybe the sound works? We'll see. Welcome to the Church of Fear. Welcome to the Church of Scientology. Tom Cruise and John Travolta say the church is a force for good. But people who've left the church say it's a space alien cult. All of humanity's ills are caused by a space alien Satan, Lord Zeno. 75 million years ago, they say, Zenu captured aliens, took them to Earth and blew them up with hydrogen bombs inside volcanoes. The souls of these dead space aliens torture humanity. Only Scientology can clear the planet. This road leads to one of the most secret places on Earth. So this is uh, Clementina Base, the end of the road. And down there, somewhere, they've got 5,000 acres, there is a, um, a vault and in it the secret writings and speeches of L. Ron Hubbard on gold discs. And on top of the mountain, two signs, which you can only see from the sky or space, pointing, what, space aliens? They come here. Anyway, let's see if we can have a matter. Push button away for response. Hi, hello. Uh, my name is uh, John Sweeney, and I was wondering whether it would be possible to come and have a look at the base. Hello. The camera there. If somebody's in. Hello. That doesn't sound very helpful. <laughs> you think it's going to self-destruct? I, don't know. I think this noise might be the Church of Scientology communicating with the outside world. Welcome to Tremontina Base. Ah. Hello? Hello. The Church of Fear, Inside the Weird World of Scientology. Published by Silvertail Books on January the 7th, 2013. Is there anyone there? Tell them I came. The Church of Scientology says, John Smith. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the best way of handling that, as they say, is for all of you to point at me and shout bigot, 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 and do that now. One, two, three. Bigot, 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 Hold on. There is absolutely no point in you coming here listening to me unless you leave completely hoarse. I want to hear all of you scream your heads off. I want you to point at me. I want you to stand up. Everybody stand up. Everybody, and this is not a laughing matter, Mr. Frenchman. Okay. It's not this funny. Not funny. Okay, right. Like Everybody cult. point at me. This is like a cult. And then <laughs> wait and shout. Bigger, 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 bigger. You see how it, easy it is to brainwash people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now, the, uh, the Church of Scientology says it's a religion. What kind of religion is it that hides its holy books in an upside cathedral in a place you can't go to, that's hidden apart from... There's a man who's got the... Are you an expert in God? Never mind. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just asking, if it's possible to fly above this place, or uh, not? <laughs> we could take, uh, we could take area pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there is. If you look at the, um, if anybody's got a clever phone, which I'm sure you all have, um, there is. It's actually in my book, and I've forgotten the name of the um, the mountain. Um, so very boringly. Um, by the way, I haven't done something I normally do, which is I very normally have a um, a pint of, in this case, Guinness, uh, which I would drink. People say alcohol is bad for you, they're right. But on the other hand, uh, alcohol is the best anti-brainwashing potion going. <laughs> and um, if you have seven pints and you're in a cult, you say, this is a fucking cult, I'm going out of <laughs> <laughs> And if you're lucky, you might vomit over the uh, cult person. Now, that's why I think cults ban things like alcohol. Um, but that's a private uh, thing, really. I've obviously got issues. I told the church, that I drank too much, and that's one of the things they, uh, they say against me. Anyway, it's called Tramontina Base, and I'm going to try and uh, find the particular bit, which is that they, uh, yes, yeah, Space Island Cathedral. Ah, yes, if you go to your iPhone, you don't have to do it now, it's called Mesa Hua Finita, that's spelled Mesa Mountain Spanish Hua, H-U-E-R-F-A-N-I-T-A, -E on any satellite map on Google Earth. And go west from that mountain, New Mexico State Road 104, trundles along the bottom of the picture, and you'll find a second nameless mountain scarred by a long concrete strip with a short leg at the northern end pointing to the east. That's the church's private airport, a zigzagging white line from the strip heads north. That's the church's private road. It leads to two enormous intersecting circles with diamonds in them. You can't see them from the road because they are on top of a mountain. But if you have that spaceship, you can see them fine. 
<laughs> so this thing, this organization that calls itself a religion, says it's not a space alien cult, the space alien stuff is bollocks. Well then why have they built a fucking cathedral underground that nobody can see but people with a spaceship? It's completely weird. Now you may think I'm biased against the church. That's not true. I'm only here because the church doesn't want people like me to tell people like you what I think of it. And, and the thing is, if it's so great and so strong and so good for you, then surely they can handle a bit of criticism. That's what's so strange about this. Now, the next clip is the church, there's Tommy Davis dealing with a little bit of criticism. It's not the loud stuff, so if, <laughs> if anybody here is clinically deaf, you're fine, but towards the end of my talk, all people with ordinary hearing will be in trouble. Here we go. <laughs> Some people say it's a sinister cult. Now, L. Ron Hubbard, some people you know, say I, that he's a fantasist and a liar. Just, I want to just go back to this one. You see, I would, so, just like, I would just like to, and, and I hope somebody is shooting this. Okay, good. Rather, there's actually, I, there's, to be there's fair, now there's, been, there's uh, now one been camera from the BBC, least, one camera from your... No, you listen to me for a second. People you have cult. no right whatsoever to say what and what isn't a religion. The Constitution of the United States of America guarantees one's right to practice and believe freely in this country. And the definition of religion is very clear, and it's not defined by John Sweeney. And for you to repeatedly refer to my faith in those terms is so derogatory, so offensive, and so bigoted, and the reason you keep repeating it is because you wanted to get a reaction like you're getting right now. Well, buddy, you got it. Right here, right now. I'm angry, real angry. Very so good. So we're done because if you use we're that term done. one more time to we're describe my done. religion, we're not done. I can't be responsible now, for my actions. Now, my friend, so, it is John, your turn to goodbye. listen. To, no, it's your turn to listen to me. I'm a British subject, not an American citizen, and in my country we have a freedom of speech. I have a right to report that. I've got a right to report that, Tommy. The. Um, We're, um, we'll get on to it, but, um... <laughs> I still can't believe they did that. Um, we had a very, 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 very clever um, producer called Sarah Mole, who's from Essex, and she said to me, Yeah, uh, you, uh, you see Jurassic Park, ain't ya? Um, she talks like that. And uh, I said, uh, Yes, I have. I said, You've seen that tether go, haven't ya? Your job, John, you're the tethered goat. And, and then she looked at me and said, you can bleed, can't you? And I went, Aah! And that was our clever plan. And our clever plan was this, is that I was the tethered goat, and we would wait for the Scientology T-Rex to come, and we'd film it. And at no point I had, throughout that entire filming experience, I had two radio mics, lest we missed a single second. We had um, a war zone cameraman from Belfast who had done more uh, awful stories in his life than anybody um, has ever a right to, who was properly conditioned um, to do this stuff. And um, Sarah had a camera on her, and um, Bill Brown had his camera, and we just waited and waited and waited for um, the church uh, to come. And they came, um, here two members of the Church of Scientology to spy on me. Actually, that's not true. Uh, one of them is one of my friends, in fact. Uh, but anyway, um, so completely fucking weird um, what happened. And all I had to do was to be the bait, and they would come for me. But to be honest, um, it exhausted me. Now, um, what's the next clip? Let's show the next clip. All right. Yeah, good. The Church of Scientology was founded by one of the greatest men who's ever lived. <laughs> Meet the creator of Scientology, 50s pop science fiction writer Lafayette Ron Hubbard, L. Ron. Nobody took his tales of bug-eyed space aliens seriously, but then he wrote a self-help book, Dianetics. It became the bible of his new religion, and Scientology grew rich charging its followers for self-improvement courses that promised fulfillment and, ultimately, 
superhuman powers. Do you ever think that you might be quite mad? Oh, yes. The one man in the world who never believes he's mad is a madman. L. Ron had to have an amazing life story. He'd been an acclaimed explorer, a nuclear physicist, and a war hero. Or so he said. It is all lies. None of it is true. None of that is true. So the whole religion is based on the word of a liar in your view? The whole religion is based on the word of a congenital liar and a brilliant consciousness trickster. An American judge in 84 said Scientology mirrored Hubbard's schizophrenic and paranoid personality. The church rejects this and all negative judgments and criticism as based on discredited evidence. In 1986, L. Ron died and a new leader took power. David Miscavige, best man at Tom Cruise's Scientology wedding last year, now heads an organization worth hundreds of millions. So, I'm looking now for a man who looks like L. Ron Hubbard, and it's you, sir. Oh, fuck. Stand up. <laughs> and I'm, uh, I'm inviting you to read the back. So, um, this is, ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause, please, for Mr. L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> The sad thing is, I know this quote. Okay, do it again. Do, do, do it. Do your impression, Pete. Do it properly. Yeah, no, actually, yeah. <coughs> okay, all right. He's correcting my fucking book. <laughs> I was up in the Van Allen belt. This is factual. You'd be surprised how warm space is. Good. Remember that last sentence. I'm looking now for Russell Miller. Because that's actually less the real one has, but you look a bit like him. <laughs> and, um, stand up. And try and say it in a proper English accent, not in a froggy nonsense. <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, the true words of Russell Miller. You've obviously seen him in real life on TV, and here's a French man impersonating him. <laughs> it is all right. No, no, actually, it's true. The over religion is based on the words of continental liar and brilliant confidence trickster. L. Ron Hubbard was a mixture of Adolf Hitler, Charles Chaplin, and Barrow Matchelson. In short, it was a con man. Great, okay, so um, your last sentence. <coughs> You Very good, everybody. how warm space is. <laughs> he was a con man. He was a con man. Okay, argue with each other. You'd be surprised how warm space is. He was, was a con man. man. Louder. You'd be surprised how warm space is. He was a con man. You'd be surprised how warm space is. He was a liar. Stop, the, stop it, you two. You, sir, stand up. You are Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Tom Cruise, read out your line. Your lines? Some people, well, if they don't like Scientology, well, then fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, period. Okay. It was a con man. Just say fuck you. Fuck you. Uh, anyway, you're getting some idea of the inner belief of the Church of Scientology. You all may sit down to a round of applause. Thank you very much. <laughs> This is, well, it's like a panto, but then Scientology isn't serious. And yes, it is, because if he can get a hold of you, then dark things can happen. Can we show our next clip? Please. Our next clip. <laughs> <laughs> Has Scientology changed? Other journalists have reported being followed at times like this. This man was asking about me at the front desk of our hotel. Then he turned up for breakfast. And the next day. And then we found him in the hotel garage. I went for a drive. You think we're being followed uh, when in doubt? This is what you do. Here's my prediction. Either two cars, the Sedona or a Range Rover will track along this road. Of course, I may be completely paranoid. Oh, there it is. Okay, there we are. Church of Scientology. 
Hello. Hello. I'm just wondering why you're curious driving behaviour. Why have you been following us? Could you tell me why you've been following us? We counted several strangers we suspect are spying on us while we made this film. Excellent. So, um... So how weird is that? What kind of religion does that? Um... I've got, I've got no memory uh, these days because I've drunk too much alcohol to keep me away from some Cosmology? Uh, what's the next clip? Cosmology? Yeah, 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 let's do that. This <coughs> is what they secretly believe in. On your last trip, did you discover what the Earth people eat? They eat a great many of these. They peel them with their metal knives. Boil them for 20 of their minutes. Then they smash them all to bits. They are clearly the most primitive people. For mash, get smashed. <laughs> um. I got that wrong. Um, <laughs> that actually isn't uh, in the holy text of uh, Ron Hubbard, but it's not far off. Um, because they believe, secretly, in a space alien Satan who um, sent by many years ago, blah, 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 you all know the story. Now this, uh, often people will say, come on, what about Islam, what about the jihadis, what about the Catholic Church and pedophiles, what about all the, uh, you know, all the religions, the big religions have got their dark, bits to them. And I say, fine, that's all true, absolutely true. But if you go into a church, they'll tell you about baby Jesus. If you go to a mosque, they'll say, follow the prophet. If you go to a synagogue, they'll say, marry a nice Jewish girl, don't eat bacon sandwiches. I'm not strong on Judaism. Anyway, never mind, you get it. But if you go into a church of Scientology in Tottenham Court Road or the crazy place in Dublin, they won't tell you about the space aliens. And that's the difference. So according to the Charity Commission in Britain, a, a religion, to be classed as a religion for charity purposes, must be open to all, and it must be open about itself. Um, that's effectively what their ruling is, and therefore Scientology is not a religion. It's not a religion because it's pay-as-you-go, and you can't have such a thing as a pay-as-you-go religion. The moment you walk in, they should tell you about Lord Zeno and the space aliens. This is the clip um, from the original and heroic panorama back in 1987 when um, we started the story, well, my, the programme actually got maybe done from the BBC, that's one of those things, never mind. Um, can we show the next clip? Thank you very much. <laughs> we wanted to talk to Scientologists about their beliefs and Tommy invited us to the church's celebrity centre in Hollywood. Tommy had lined up a host of celebrities to tell us what it's helped them achieve. We met Tommy's mum, actress Ann Archer, the victim of the bunny boiler in Fatal Attraction. Why are you a Scientologist? In the church for over 30 years, she said Scientology had improved her life, given her a wonderful marriage and was a highly ethical organisation. Next up, Natural Born Killers star Juliet Lewis. I'm on this. Come on, let's go. Okay, baby. She said Scientology helped her connect with people in a way she found valuable as an actress. Leah Remini from the hit US show King of Queens. So that's it, cutie. Your cave is complete. She said Scientology had given her the tools to maintain a happy, healthy life. Kirsty Alley from Cheers. Up the good work, Woody. She told us that Scientology had given her an important set of life skills. And more. Their answers were interesting and counted the negative voices we'd heard from. But you won't be hearing them. Why not? Here's why. There are people out there who say it is a cult. Last week, the Scientology celebrities said they wanted out. Their lawyers wrote letters saying I had ambushed them and asked offensive questions. Legal action was threatened under California's privacy laws. Scientology has spent millions of dollars in copyright actions to stop ex-believers from publishing its most secret scriptures on the internet. 
They reveal Elrond's core belief that we're all inhabited with the ghostly remains of dead aliens called Thetans, exiled to planet Earth and then killed by an intergalactic warlord. This is how Panorama illustrated Elrond's words back in 1987. Zemu decided to take radical measures to overcome the population problem. Beings were captured on other planets and flown to locations near 10 volcanoes or more on Earth. H-bombs were dropped on the volcanoes, destroying the bodies of the beings who, as Thetans, attached themselves to one another as clusters. Scientology now flatly denies the Zanu story, but it's been so widely reported it seemed wrong not to ask them about it, particularly as many of them are senior Scientologists or operating Thetans. Zenu, an intergalactic warlord, banish souls from alien souls, banish them to Earth and then blew them up. Kirsty Alley, operating Thetan level 7, said it wasn't true. An evil galactic warlord who blew up bits of aliens. Juliet Lewis giggled and denied it. The um, galactic warlord <coughs> who 75 million years ago sort of put people's Aliens. John, I already answered this too. I told you it's none of us know what you're talking about. It's like loony. It's weird. It makes you look weird. Hi. Hi. It was a long day and we were filmed continuously. The team needed a break. I can hear them. Okay. We're just having a kind of an editorial conference in the loo because it's the only place where we can go. To escape from them. Are you guys doing okay in there? Yeah, we're just. Um, All three of you are in the bathroom together. Yeah, well, the point is, Tommy, is, is that, that okay? It's 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 fine. Is it's this like BBC policy or something. It's a BBC requirement, uh, Tommy. Yeah. And now he says. Interview's over. We were ready to wrap, but not Tommy. So I thought you sit in this room what's, what's, across from these esteemed women, these my, dignified women. You don't understand the nature of journalism with respect, Tom. No, 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 no. Because I don't understand the nature of you no, as a person. Very good, thank you. Is the thing that I'm at because you have no objectivity whatsoever. Thank you, I understand. Zero. Thank you. Because Sean Lonsdale, convicted sexual pervert, is your pal that you're chauffeuring around like, Clearwater. Not, you're making not this film with no objectivity from a bigoted, slanted, preconceived, already determined idea of exactly how it's going to go because you decided what Scientology was the day long before you ever even called we'll it to meet with us. We'll have to agree to disagree. As evidenced by the and fact we'll that she was a pair. Good. Smashing. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh. There is. Uh, System, so we need to have all of you sing Staying Alive. Okay, hand in the dancing. Everybody stand up. You've got to stand up. Come on, like, Staying Alive. Staying Alive. With the hand in the Staying Alive. Everybody, come on. Staying Alive.
John. Okay, Mr. John Travolta. Go. Mr. Tom Cruise, your line. <laughs> You'd be surprised how warm space is. <laughs> there are some cold men. Yay! Anyway, yes, so. Um, so one of the weird things is this, and it's very simple. I was brought up as a Catholic, um, um, and um, I'm not one anymore. I, I was an altar boy, I wasn't abused, uh, and I hold that against them. <laughs> um, I have to say, I have a soft spot for the Church of England. Uh, they have nice buildings, they stole them from the paedophiles. Now that's, um, the nice thing about the Church of England is that uh, you can believe in anything or nothing, and nothing will ever happen to you. The Archbishop of Canterbury, as far as I know, doesn't hire private eyes and all that kind of stuff. And there's a, there's a very clever guy called Craig Brown who says, um, um, in an empty church, he could believe in God. It's only when the church is full that he becomes a proper atheist. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I kind of sense that. So I wouldn't want... Um, I think people have a right to believe in things. And, and, and people have a right not to believe in things, but people have a right to believe in things, and I respect that right, and I will stand up for it. But equally, there is a, a, another right, which is a right to criticise, a right to mock, a right to scrutinise, and the two rights must both be allowed. Now, in living history... Oh, sort of, for example, under Stalin and under Mao, but in particular under Stalin, tens of thousands of Orthodox Russian priests were murdered. In, in, and there are still people alive who can remember those times. As it happens, the jihadis are catching up with the, the cartoonists. But there has been a time when militant atheists killed tens of thousands of perfectly decent people for no good reason. And that was, that's wrong, but equally, you've got to have a right to criticise, to mock, to scrutinise. And that's what we're here doing. And all of us, I think, should just reflect. I mean, Scientology and the jihadists are not the same. I don't think Scientology is a good thing for humanity, and I don't like the way that its ambassadors can get away with it. But let's also think about the poor cartoonists. Can I have a quick round of applause for Charlie Hebdo? Yeah. <laughs> who were only exercising their right to mock, to criticise, and so forth and so on. Um, now, I'm looking for... Um, where are you from? Downey. Good, very good. Up you go. Um, by the way, I don't like the fact that Tom Cruise did a film of, uh, where he, he became um, von Stauffenberg, who is the great hero of the democratic resistance to, um, to Nazi Germany, and Cruise plays him. Now, was that because Cruz really likes von Stauffenberg, or was it because he's a member of what is an authoritarian, or maybe even a totalitarian cult, and what he's doing is trying to annoy modern Germany? And I, uh, to be honest with you, I stopped making, most of the time, World War II jokes after I saw von Stauffenberg uh, portrayed by Tom Cruise, because I thought that's just a joke too far. <laughs> now, um, I've made you stand up, and, uh, but anyway, I'll, I'll get to the point very quickly, which is that... Um, there are a number of things we couldn't show in our, in our film, Scientology and Me. One of them was um, a lady who I, we met. We went down, her name is, I'm going to call her Betty, and she lived about three hours from London. What happened was, after I shouted at Tommy Davis, there's a, there's a, they all didn't react. It was strange, because they wanted, they knew we had a film, and they were waiting to hit me with a clip of me shouting, when the film came out. And we thought, let's go and find somebody who's British, who is a victim of Scientology. We, didn't, um, we did the filming with Scientology in the States first, and then we were looking for um, uh, British victims. We found this woman. Her name was Betty. And, um, and um, you, she said this. It was one of the most moving interviews I've ever done. She has been hypnotized and brainwashed. It's like a staring, a glare, almost icy, fixed, hardly a blink, in the, and the eyes look larger than normal. It is, it is a trance. I want to give her a hug, and I want to love her. I loved her, I loved her anyway, but love her properly, and I can't because there is me, there is Samantha, and there is Scientology in the middle. And I can't seem to get a break. 
her mind has been absolutely taken over, and that is really, really frightening. Good. And what happened was this. This poor woman, thank you. This poor woman, Betty, had um, uh, a bloke, uh, had two kids, and uh, uh, they got divorced, and they got the two kids, and the son uh, dies in a, um, in a grim accident, a car crash, on Friday the 13th. And now Friday the 13th ro rotates around the calendar. Um, basically, mum and daughter would get together on Friday the 13th and have a hug, and they would remember the dead son, the dead brother. And then what happens is that um, she has a disastrous affair, and in the middle of emotional uh, torment, she um, um, ends it and goes into the Church of Scientology near her in Britain and joins up and becomes a member. And slowly and surely, she's sucked in deeper and deeper and deeper. Her mum's very worried about her, and eventually her mother um, is disconnected by a daughter. She, so she doesn't see her daughter anymore, doesn't talk to her, no contact. No Christmas cards, no contact at Christmas, no contact at birthdays, no contact at Mother's Day. But worst of all for this poor woman, no contact on Friday the 13th. Mm. And what happened was immediately after um, we did the interview, we got on the train back. At that point, the BBC's office was, our Panorama office was in Shepherd's Bush. And um, as we came out of White City Tube Station, Patrick, my assistant producer, his phone rang and it was Betty. My daughter's just come through the door. First time in two years. She's going to, we're going to make a go of it, mother and daughter. But she wants me to ask you, kill the interview with Panorama. Hmm. And we did, because we can only, this kind of stuff, we can only do it to volunteer army. But it was the power of the church to suppress that interview. And I thought that was absolutely dreadful. Okay. So, um, uh, uh, shall we, let's have another clip. No, that's that's yeah. Sorry, I'll have some questions shortly. But uh, I'll just, I, I like um, being a dictator, really. Uh, <laughs> off you go. That afternoon we head back to Clearwater, Scientology town, to meet filmmaker Sean Lonsdale. He's one man against Elrond's crowd. And I was trying to capture the daily scene of Scientology, or Scientologists passing back and forth across the street. He spent weeks filming Scientologists for a slot on his local cable TV network. He called his show Cult Watch. Why did you pick on them? Aren't you a little bit crazy to do this? It was the biggest, it was the 500 pound gorilla in the room that nobody wanted to talk about. Here in Clearwater, everybody talks about them in their living rooms and jokes about them in the bars and in the little cafes, but nobody really knows, has an idea what it's really about. So I was like, this has to be shown. He says Scientology fair gamed him. Sean freely admits that he was for a time a male prostitute and has two spent convictions for soliciting sex with adult men. Then this, warning posters raking up his past all around town. And that wasn't all. I was followed by private investigators. I was followed by several vehicles which I was later able to track back to um, Scientology owned vehicles. There's a, uh, there's a car here and somebody stopped. That's Tommy Davis. Good afternoon. You must be Sean. Mr. Davis, I assume. Yes, that's correct. Nice to meet you. Uh, good to meet you. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that we were on record, um, you know, as far as this gentleman here that you're with. I don't know if he, how upfront he's been with you. He tends to be pretty public about it, but um, uh, in, in 1999, he was arrested for trespassing, exposure of sexual organs, Unnatural and lascivious act, possession of cannabis, possession of drug paraphernalia. Now, of course, now what would he Scientology does, be able to help me with any what, of these problems I supposedly have? What he now, what he does is he does speak about this openly, and of course, you, by the way, he's he does, not an animal. You can answer that question. What he does, no, I just want to make sure that we've documented this, and I'd be happy to speak to him. Well, hold on a second. But wait, he, actually, no, I'm Tommy, just going to finish. When no, now, you're, I'm no, making no comment on, oh, well, no, on hold what he chooses to do I'm with interviewing. his time and his, I'm, and, I'm interviewing you know, and his the sexual man. behavior. Every time we talk to a critic of Scientology. 
technology, you within hours come up and say, that's an extortionist, that's a sexual pervert. It's as if you are terrified of anyone criticising your are organisation. Of anything? It's, it's as if there's something you, that you've got to hide. I am not terrified of anything, and you know what? I have absolutely nothing to hide whatsoever. Zero. Really? Dig okay. and dig and mm -hmm. dig. Okay, well give it us some access. There. Come on, let's have some okay. access. Let's, let's, so, let's go to these places. To but, a hostile reporter who has uh, no intention of giving a balanced report, by I evidence but, but, of the fact that you give more weight and importance, and now more hours of time to people critical of the than you did that's to rubbish. anyone that's else. Rubbish. The, well, fact, the fact that one of Somehow I can't imagine the Church of England can't, behaving like this. Face that. Right, so, um, you know, the Church deny this, and they say I'm psychotic. Uh, let's have a quick round of bigger, bigger, bigger. Bigger, bigger, bigger! bigger, 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 bigger. Uh, so David Miscavige is the Pope of Scientology. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of emails, um, about 30 pages from him. To, um, to Mike Rinder and Tommy Davis. Uh, you're off. Thanks very much for coming. Yeah. And, um, no, I think it's Joe Anyway, no, I'm sure not Beggins. Anyway, so uh, David Miscavige, they deny this, but basically from, our, from his office there are dozens and dozens of emails. Mr Miscavige, would you please stand up? Thank you very much. So um, he sends a number of secret coded uh, things, the first one of which, if you could please read it, Mr Miscavige. Y S Y S Y S Y S, which means which means you suck, you suck, you suck, you suck. Everybody, this is the word of the Church of Scientology. Do it now. This is the word of the Church of Scientology. And the next one, please, Mr. Miscavige. C I C S, which stands for counterintentional cock. <laughs> this is the word of the <laughs> And this, the bone stormer. Y-S-C-O-H-B. Which means? You suck on Hollywood. So, there is absolutely no point in doing all of this without showing what happened when the tethered goat turned into the tethered rhino? <laughs> I'm not an expert on brainwashing. And when asked in that case why he kept making the accusation, Sweeney's reaction was unexpected to say the least. Move to the no! no, listen to me! You are not there! At the beginning of that interview! You were not Is a crime you understand? You are quoting the second half of the interview, of not the first half. You cannot understand what you're saying. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. There's one more final clip, and this is from um, because I still work for the BBC. The I think maybe done them. Um, it's a clip from Lord Hall, the Director General of the BBC, who would like you all to see his following comments. And when asked in that case why he kept making the accusation. Sweeney's reaction was unexpected, to say the least. Scientology with nuclear weapons. <laughs> um, that's a joke one day I hope to crack in Pyongyang. Um, <laughs> and equally one day I'd like to go to Clearwater and say uh, North Korea is Scientology. Uh, but never mind, I won't. Um, okay, um, we've, all, all, we've already heard it, but um, the best way, we're trying to summarise the Church of Scientology um, in two words. We can only turn back to the wisdom and the wit and the philosophical sense of Mr. Tom Cruise.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Any, um, any questions? There's a question from a lovely lady who brought me a bunch of goodness. Thank you very much. I just made an observation there that when you were asking, and I saw the full documentary, when you were asking all of the famous celebrity Scientologists, they were all, when you were asking them about Xeno, they were all making faces, but Leah Rimini actually wasn't. Yeah, I spotted that. I, I just, did you just spot that, Pete? I just thought, God, she, maybe she was going to try and answer it, and Tommy Davis straight away caught in and stopped her. And it's interesting yeah. that she's the only one of them that's flown. Yeah. Yeah. And her whole family. Yeah. She, she, um, I, like, I, I didn't know who the hell she was. Um, I fancied her, uh, the, that came out wrong. I, uh, I, admired, her as a woman. I admired her as a woman. Um, and, um, but no, I fancied her. And, uh, but I didn't know who the hell she was. And I had to say, and this is a crime in Hollywood, I'm very sorry, but I don't know who you are. And everybody knows who you are. But she was funny and charming. And in my book, I, I go into all of this. And, and I say, of all of the celebrities, she was the one I'm, I'm most light and she's the one who's left yeah. um, but also I mean they are so Tommy Davis is a second generation Scientologist and one of the things we've got to feel sorry of for these people is they're trapped in it uh, you'll understand this um, in a funny way but I on my book on North Korea I, um, I set out to meet um, Europeans Westerners uh, who'd spent time in North Korea simply so I could understand through their stories what it was like and I ended up finding out that six IRA men, officials, not provos, had gone to Pyongyang in 1988 to learn how to blow up the British. And I met this guy in, in Belfast, and he's a big guy, and there were two others, and it was, and I am, I'm a plastic paddy, I've got an Irish surname and I drink Guinness and Irish whiskey, but basically I'm English, and I, uh, well, work for the BBC. So we're on the other side, and this guy looks at me, quite hostile, and he said, John, before we start, I have one thing to tell you. And I said, what's that? And he said, I'm a member of the Church of Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> and I went, fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> and he, he broke into an enormous smile and said, I was joking. And, uh, <laughs> anyway, what was fascinating about his time in North Korea was that it opened his eyes to the fact that however bad things may be for Irish Republicans in West Belfast, it's nothing like as bad as how ordinary North Koreans are treated by their disgusting and evil tyrannical regime. Yeah. And so going to Pyongyang cracked his brainwashing. And it took a long time before he left, but eventually he left the, um, um, the IRA and gave up. His, his divorce began with violent um, Irish Republican nationalism in North Korea. Now this gives me hope, it gives me hope in when you think about the people, the sad jihadis who've gone from the West, who are now doing um, awful things inside Syria and Iraq, um, admittedly against awful governments, but nevertheless. Um, and I think that you, I think of this IRA man, and I think that he managed to unbrainwash himself. So all of these people inside the church may one day get out of it and wake up that they've been conned, that they've been brainwashed. And this is why I come to these events, and um, as well as the other thing. <laughs> <laughs>
But thanks to the internet, you can be.